Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and welcome to another amazing video. This video is not sponsored by anyone, I just thought this is a, such a cool library that I should introduce it to you. Now for the last few months, I got into the mode where I realized that people might be knowing all of this and then in yesterday's live, a lot of people convinced me that hey Hitesh, the thing that you know might be very common for you and your friends but there are a lot of people on the internet who are not aware about such services. So I have decided that I'll get back into the mode of introducing you to amazing libraries, features, services that are offered either free on GitHub or paid services or maybe are cool features of, for example, AWS new services or uh, Azure new services. So in such videos, we'll be just exploring something new cutting edge and based on the comment section that you will be providing in the comments, uh, whether should I make a full-fledged tutorial on it or not, that's all uh, going to be decided by you. So in this video, I'll share you something really interesting and cool that you will absolutely enjoy. So every single application that you're building always and always faces some of the fake account flood that comes around. When we build our application, Learn Code Online, uh, which was eventually being sold, uh, what we realized is sometimes there are fake signups and they are no use at all. You really don't want to pump up your user base just with those fake accounts. You really want to isolate them totally. And also in case you are buying something, maybe a shopping cart or something, you really want to avoid people uh, there to sign up. Or even visitors, maybe you want to block them totally. And people do create fake accounts. Online world is really, really scary and it's anonymous. And people all the time create different accounts and just uh, log in into your website with those accounts. But there is something really interesting. So what happens is, uh, let's just say this is your system. So let's just go ahead and work on with this. So let's just say this is your system entirely. And in this system, this is your browser. Now, it's not just your browser that you are having. When you are actually onto a system, there are a lot of things about it. Uh, so let's just say there is your browser. And apart from that, uh, what kind of, uh, not just browser, what kind of hardware you are using. Uh, that also gets a little bit involved. And whether you are on uh, incognito mode or not, uh, there are a lot of information like that. And you actually propagate all this information online, sometimes willingly, sometimes unwillingly. A lot of applications track this information. Facebook is notoriously known for tracking a whole lot of information, even uh, what websites you have visited in the past or from where you, on what website you are moving after this website. There's a lot of tracking that happens. And every single tracking and every single device that you're having, uh, somehow in theory, it is said that it leaves a unique fingerprint trail that you can use for your advantage. Not only just blocking that user, sometimes you may want to track your user. If the visitor is coming back, you want to show him a different page or want to provide him a discount. There's a lot that you can do around it. One such use case is, uh, let's just say we generate uh, this unique ID uh, of the user that is available to us uh, back there. And uh, what you can do is you can store that into your database. Let's just say this is your database. Doesn't look like it, but let's just say this is your database. You can store this into a database. Now, if this user actually creates another fake account, it is said that this fingerprint ID will remain exactly same for this, no matter if it creates a fresh new account, uh, because sometimes your system might be the same or maybe your network might be the same. Yes, I agree. This is not a foolproof solution. There is no like 100% guarantee that ID will remain same. But maybe you are using uh, same patterns, same IP addresses, same area. Maybe you are not changing country every single time to create the account. So there is a lot of information. Now, you, once this ID is stored in the database, you can actually go ahead and match it with this and probably can block this user entirely or can show him some discount for that purchase. There's a lot that can happen. So for doing such things, there is one such library which is known as Fingerprint.js. Yes, it's available in both mode. It's totally open source and it's a pro version as well. Depends on how much budget you have and how much tracking you want to do for the user, you can actually go ahead and do that. So it's pretty simple. All you got to do is Fingerprint.js. So download and install it. It's available in NPM as well. And by the way, if you want me to create a tutorial on this, that how to actually use it, a basic use case, let me know in the comment section there and uh, I'll make a separate tutorial, a kind of a uh, to-do kind of application with this, where we store the, this ID into a database and show you that we cannot register that user, something like that. So all you can do is just have this library and what this library does, it actually gives you some ID. So for example, you can see, this is Fingerprint Pro, but if I switch back, it actually takes me onto, the, onto their original page. So here it is. So here you can see this is the open source version where you get this visitor's ID, uh, which you can use. You can store it in database uh, with some confidence score and maybe you are tracking not just the email, but this IDs as well, just as an optional. 
But if you switch on to Fingerprint Pro, then you can store its uh, BART information, incognito modes, IP location, when this user was first seen, not the user, this ID was first seen. There's a lot that you can go ahead and track this. So I found that this is pretty cool of an information. And by the way, a lot of people, especially Facebook, is using like a pro pro version of Fingerprint JS to track you. And whenever you open your website, whether it's on LinkedIn, Instagram, any application you say, you have noticed that they don't open your application or your web, web page directly in Chrome because that is controlled by Google. All the tracking goes to Google. But if they open it up in their own browser implementation, what they do is they inject this script first into that web page and then load that web page on top of it so that they can track you on that website as well. So that is why you see on LinkedIn, Instagram, every single social media page, they like to open links in their own browser. They want information and that's how they actually get it. So if you find this useful, pretty cool, uh, this information, this style of video where it's absolutely raw and just pure information, let me know in the comment section. I'll definitely create more such high paced video where it is just pure information, uh, nothing else, no bullshit, nothing like that. So let me know in the comment section if you'd like to see an extended version of this tutorial in the comment section. And the most important thing is share it with your developer friends in your WhatsApp group, in your college, so that they are also aware that such things exist. It's not just about uh, creating update, read, delete, and to do. There are some fun stuff available as well. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.